Uh, so good afternoon, everyone. I'm very pleased to be here and to present you the activity that uh, we are doing at CEA uh, uh, for safe on psych for safe and secure IoT system. So first, I would like to tell you where I come from, so from CEA. Um, so CEA is a research organization in France, which is uh, about um, uh, 16,000 people, so uh, with 10 research centers, and our budget is about uh, 3.4 uh, billion euros. So uh, in CA, you have fundamental research and uh, technology development into three groups. Um, I belong to the technology enabling, uh, key enabling technology, so the technological research division called CATEC. So typically, CATEC, uh, our mission is to create and transfer innovation to industry. So our, our uh, uh, annual budget is uh, uh, above uh, 600 uh, million euros, so about uh, 81 billion yen. So we have created more than uh, 50 startup ventures in the last 10 years, and we are uh, uh, um, proposing 600 priority patents application per year, and our group is about uh, uh, 4,500 employees. So we have more than 500 customers, so where 40% of them come from the big group, big companies. 45% of them come from uh, small companies on startup, and we have 15% from international collaboration. So as you see here, we have part of our funding that come uh, from CEA, um, and part from external funding, which is quite grow, uh, growing during the last year, roughly 15% per year. So, uh, in, a, in a nutshell, what is our mission statement? Is really to create innovation and to transfer it to industry. So, to work with and for industry. So, we are a, a state-owned research organization, and uh, as, as i shown before, more than 80% of our budget come from a research and development contract and we are looking for long-term partnership in various uh, directions. So we are result-oriented, so we make our best effort to address the partner issue, to really understand what are the needs of our partner and to provide them with the right innovation. We are also project-oriented, meaning that we are reactive and flexible, so we don't want to push one technology, we really want to listen to the customer and to, ask, and to uh, give them what is the best for them. So really, the idea is to making the technology reach, reach, reach the market. So it's really seeking fair solution for both parties. So more in detail, we have several institutes in the CIATEC. So one is LETI which is more on the micro technology, electronics, MEMS, on, on the, on the uh, basic uh, hardware technology. V there is also LIST, which is a software intensive system on advanced manufacturing group. So see, with both of them, uh, it's more than uh, 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 2,500 employees. And we have also a third one, which is more on new energy technology, like solar cells, fuel cells. But I will focus more on what Leti and List are doing on the IoT. So, as it was said in the previous talk, IoT is a uh, hype now, and, uh, and people see that it will lead to many opportunities in a lot of domain, so making our life more smart. So for example, smarter trans uh, transport, smart healthcare, smart cities, uh, smart space, smart shopping. So if you see here, it's basically a huge potential market of about uh, uh, $2 trillion in 2020. So uh, Cisco predict that for that more than uh, 50 billion of connected objects will be present by 2020. 
Uh, and with this, uh, a lot of new business model will be created. So you could really see it's that everything has a service. So we have to be created, and you have to be created to find new market opportunities, a new business that could use uh, this technology of, of Internet of Things. So as I said before, it's a huge potential market. We will see up to one trillion sensor that will be deployed uh, all over the place. And the traffic grow basically 20% per year. If you see the evolution between uh, uh, 2003 to, uh, to 2020, where we will have 50 billion of, um, of connected objects, you will see that the machine-to-machine -machine communication far exceed the communication between uh, a man on the Internet. So it's really where uh, all the network will grow and explode. So in this uh, new market of Internet of Things, what will be the main challenges? So I identify four main challenges. The first one, I can call it the data deluge. Second one is energy and energy consumption of all these systems. The third one is dependability, how you could rely on this system. And the last one, that was also a, a key point in the previous um, a keynote, was interoperability between all these systems. So I will first start with the data deluge. So all these 50 billion connected system will create very large amount of data. So it's estimated again that in 2020, we will have more than 40 zettabyte of data created per year. So just to give you an idea, one zettabyte is 10 to the 21 byte. And somebody counted related to the number of uh, grain of sand that, that varies in all the beaches on Earth. And it's uh, uh, 40, uh, 57 times the total amount of grain of sand in all beaches uh, in, uh, in the world. So just to conceive that this is a very large amount of system of data created, and this will be a, a, a tremendous challenge to communicate, to exchange them, and to process them and to make meaningful use all of this data. So what could be some solution for this data deluge? So first, we will need new communication protocol because if we use the standard protocol, we will really explode all the bandwidth. So we will need sporadic traffic, so meaning that the device will only communicate when it's needed. It will be asynchronous, decentralized, and of course, low power. The second point is that not everything needs to go back to the cloud. We need to have local-based service, so process data uh, where it's created to avoid this bottleneck of interconnection. We'll need also for the wireless device to use all the spectrum possible, so really having solution that could use the complete spectrum and dynamically moving from one part to the other according to the quality of service or to the need. We need also new sensor, and mainly smart sensor. So there is a question in the previous talk about elderly pe uh, uh, people. So of course, detecting if they fall is a key problem uh, if we want them to stay at home. So for this, we might use value sensor, but camera are also good. But as it was said before, people don't want that image could be seen mainly in the, in the bedroom or everywhere. So we need smart sensor, which capture the image, processes locally, and only communicate the relevant information, meaning that people is lying. So it's only one bit that we need, not sending image, and all the processing need to be local. So uh, I will give you some example of the technology we develop. The first one is a Wiseprom software platform. So it's a software platform for uh, uh, um, uh, set of uh, of a sensor wireless um, a display. So it's um, it's your standard uh, IP protocol, 
but for robust and efficient networking in multi-hop on constrained uh, wireless uh, uh, sensor network. Multi-hop, why? Because uh, uh, if one sensor is away from the main gateway, then its information could go from one sensor to another. This allows to dynamically add new sensor on the system and still having the, the main bandwidth with the system. Of course, these wireless sensors are very small in compute power, so we need to have a very low uh, footprint on service stack. So we need to reduce the, the, the computing need uh, for this protocol. And of course, you need to be interoperable with various kinds of accesses. On all this network, you will need also being able to manage it. And one problem, for example, is the software update. So you need to be able to broadcast a software update on all the system. And, and of course, we need to do this with a security so that hacker cannot send a false firmware to the system. So really, the aim of this approach is to make wireless sensor network easy to deploy, secure, and easy to manage. So for a lot of applications, like smart building, smart home, smart grid, industrial networks, and so on. I will take just an example uh, on, on the remote management and software update. Uh, um, uh, currently, you have to update each software for each node uh, independently, but it's not very efficient. It's far better to broadcast and be able to uh, make this update uh, 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 for all the nodes and in a reliable um, uh, system. So what we do here, we add uh, an extra layer, both on the, surf, uh, on the server and on the gateway and on the nodes that allow to make reliable multicast on this sensor network. So it's compatible with the standard, with the Etsy machine-to-machine -machine, uh, platform, but it's extra software layer that allow to have uh, this more efficiency in updating and controlling software update because, well, if you have thousands of nodes, upgrading their, their software will be a, really, um, a real problem. Here, I, I, I talk about locality. So here, this is um, one system that we did with one uh, small company called Bispoon, is to be able to track objects in rooms with uh, very high accuracy, about four centimeters, up to uh, two kilometers wide. So it's a small tag here that you could uh, uh, put in your keys, in your bags, uh, on, on everything. And here you will be able to locate all your belongings or the location of, of the sensor so that uh, 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 you will know where are things. And this is a very efficient um, uh, hardware and low power device. Another solution is when you have all these sensors, they need to communicate wireless. Wi-Fi is consuming a lot of energy. So GSM, 4G uh, are very expensive also in energy. So with a company called Sigfox, they want to develop a new a global cellular interconnectivity uh, solution for the, smart, uh, for the smart sensor. We work with, with them and we and we design uh, 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 the component that allow this communication. It's in the ISM band, uh, uh, 433-915 megahertz. So it's unless science uh, um, uh, bands. Uh, it's uh, very sensible. It's low throughput because it's basically for wireless sensors, but it's allowed to support, uh, to support millions of these interconnected devices. It's starting in France, it's also in, uh, in uh, South America, and it's growing. So you could register and then having this small hardware, and then you can interconnect your device to internet uh, wirelessly uh, with a very efficient uh, method here. Well, we need to harvest all the part of the, of the spectrum. So from time to time, you need to transfer a large amount of data. It's perhaps not needed to broadcast through YGIG, 60 gigahertz or Wi-Fi um, your movie. Uh, uh, 
uh, perhaps you could have a short range communication, and this is an example of uh, a battery-less memory tag that's allowed to download one gigabit of, uh, of data in less than 10 seconds. So it's very uh, short range. It didn't disturb all the spectrum, but it's very efficient. So it's something that we did with Nokia a few years ago. And it's see, very efficient, five milliwatt for power consumption. We need also for this Internet of Things, smart sensor. So we work on this um, smart camera, but here I have uh, illustrated uh, with two examples. The first one is an RFID chip that gives um, uh, some information about the tire. So here you could follow the state of the tire uh, uh, dynamically. One other solution that we did with uh, Primo 1D is to be able to sew on various fabric electronics. So for example, here you see a sewing machine with all the components here that are linked with, uh, w with connection. So here you could uh, uh, put a smart clothes with LED or with sensor or with processing uh, very easily. So here you see this is also a smart device, but that you could uh, will never see because it will be on your on your clothes, for example. So the second challenge for Internet of Things is the energy consumption. So this is very drastic problem. Well, first for this uh, low power cyber physical system. So of course you will have this uh, uh, wireless smart sensor. So some of them will be scavenging energy from the environment. So of course they need to be a very low power. So here you need all the techniques to reduce the power consumption both of, of computing and the communication. But it's also a problem about the server, because when, when you have to process all this data, it's cost a lot. So I'm taking an, an analogy with the high performance computing. If we want to reach the one exaflop, which is the next uh, um, a, a step with the current technology, it will cost you one billion, uh, one uh, million euro per day of energy bill. So it's not possible. So the main meaning that not only for the power dissipation heats, but also only for the cost of energy. So you need also to reduce the power consumption of server. And here you need to use all technology. Uh, software is a large part, electronic design, but also technology. And here I would like to introduce you to the uh, uh, FDSOIA, I, the fully depleted silicon on insulator. So it's a, a, a silicon technology that we have developed uh, together with ST Microelectronic and now with Samsung, uh, with Samsung that's allowed to improve performance and improve performance per watt uh, for the system. So if you compare here, compared to bulk silicon, so if we have uh, used uh, FDSOI, you could be 168% more efficient at low voltage and, to f and up to 50% at higher voltage. And more importantly, with the same device, you could go at very high frequency here, 2.6 gigahertz, but also at very low voltage, so in uh, .4 volt, um, you can go up to 450 uh, megahertz. So with the same device, you could go to the full range of performance that, that clearly adapts your need from, uh, from the quality of service that you need. So it's very energy efficient. And here, I would like to make a first advertisement. This will be public, in fact, uh, next week at, at ESSCC uh, uh, in San Francisco. But we are opening a design center uh, uh, in Grenoble in France that will ha allow uh, uh, our partners, so it might be you, to develop your system using various technology, including uh, uh, FDSOI, and to allow to make pre-series, pre-products uh, for your new device. Well, I don't have time to go into detail of all uh, what is needed. I just want to give you also what we are doing for the server. Uh, so server is the other part. Uh, you have all the uh, Internet of Things 
on, on the server that are making, collecting data, processing data, being the cloud computing. And here we are also working on very energy efficient uh, um, computing device that we called green computing module. So it's based on the uh, uh, fully depleted silicon insulator, FDSOI technology. It's using 3D silicon integration. So why? Because with this, we can make the memory near to the processor. So to avoid all the energy loss in communication between the processing and the memory and the storage. And we are using 64-bit ARM core. And this approach is really scalable from microservers that could be at home, your gateway, up to uh, high performance uh, computing. And uh, uh, today, uh, uh, with all the data created, we see that only 1% of worst data are analyzed on, on less than 20% is protected. So meaning that we will still need a large amount of processing if we want to be more efficient in, in processing all this data that are created by uh, uh, this Internet of Things. So now I am going to the sensor, to the cyber physical block. And here we have also a solution that we call the Elliot. So, in this cyber physical system, you need a block which is always responsive. So always be able to interact with the environment. It's not like cl classical computing where it reacts when it has finished. Here, it's the physical world which is the master. So the electronics need to uh, respond immediately and with very low power. So here we have developed this architecture which has advanced programmable wake-up feature, ultra low power, so using asynchronous technology, lightweight cryptography, and it's really event-driven, energy-driven, so from the event that are coming from outside or from it. And, uh, and the system is adaptive, so uh, um, uh, when it needs more resources, it triggers an on-demand system, which is more classical system with uh, more power hungry, but more efficient ra uh, radio, more efficient cryptography, and uh, 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 imager, and things like that. And it's really uh, 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 application driven for this uh, system that could allow uh, higher integrity and confidentiality because these are more high level data. And of course, all this is managed with an advanced power management units, and, and uh, it could be linked to energy harvesting system. So with this solution, for the uh, uh, sensor nodes and for the cyber physical on nodes, we could gain uh, up to a factor 100 in power efficiency compared to a classical system uh, which is uh, uh, on with interrupts and things like that. Next point, which is very important, is dependability, meaning that on this system, you need to feel trust from this system. So that's involve several things, privacy, security, reliability. So today, uh, people could say that the IoT is not the Internet of Things, but the Internet of Threats. Today, security, privacy, uh, make really headlines of the newspaper. You have certainly seen that, um, uh, well, smart TV are spying on you, uh, Polish people derail tram after hacking the network of the, of the tram controller. Even people were able to hack pacemakers. And with, uh, well, this connected fridge and devices could be an uh, 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 entry point for cyber attack and, uh, and uh, denial of service attacks and things like that. So meaning that the massive adoption of Internet of Things by citizens will rely on confidence in terms of security and privacy, and this is very important. So, um, the point is that security and privacy is not only a software point. It's neither only hardware point. 
is the right combination between hardware and software. So we need to work together between hardware designer and software designer to make the more secure things. And it's really what is one of your, uh, one of our strengths with the Leti on list. One is more hardware, one is more software, and we work together to really make a system uh, uh, safe and secure. So uh, from the DARPA, uh, uh, Deputy Director said that trustworthy computing with software cannot exist until we have trustworthy hardware to build it on. So it's really key points, it's really combination of hardware and software. So what are the solutions for this dependability? Of course, security. So uh, authentication, uh, cryptography, uh, scalable, secure networks. We need also uh, uh, criticity, meaning that these systems are interconnected with the real world. So they need to respond in a particular amount of time or not longer. So if your ABS breaks, uh, breaks five seconds after you, you press the pedal, you are in a big trouble. So here timing becomes very important. So time critical system here. And of course, reliability, uh, both from the hardware and also from the communication network. So what are our solution or idea for this uh, security issue? The first one is that uh, uh, we are making and we are expert in security assessment and certification. We'll explain it later. We are able to make hardware secure uh, IoT nodes. Also above, on the middleware software, we have secure uh, uh, sensor and gateway um, a solution. Also for the interconnect, as I shown previously, we have also solution from the network uh, technology that allow to be more reliable and secure. And also we are able to support large scale deployments of this uh, uh, scale up to million of nodes. So the first point, well, uh, 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 we are uh, uh, one of the, certif uh, the certification laboratory in France so we, uh, for itself. So meaning that we are the, at the highest evaluation uh, assurance level on electronic component and embedded software, EL7. So it's a French certification scheme, but also the international banking scheme. So we support all the encryption uh, and the verification for companies like uh, MasterCard, Visa, and so on. We are able to make security evaluation of embedded systems, software attack, physical attack. So really, if you have one solution, you say, well, it's secure, we will try to really test if your solution is secure. And uh, now we work on uh, various domain, uh, smart card, of course, but also automotive uh, for the uh, microcontroller, uh, body control, motor control of, um, of car. So this is for the hardware. But we are also similar activities for the network. So uh, we have a group which is specialized in analyzing threats, implement attack to really see if the network of if the software solution for your uh, network is um, uh, could resist uh, to the attack and could uh, develop tools, uh, security test beds, and uh, propose a solution and develop new solution for uh, a safe and secure network. Well, in terms of hardware, it's really a trade-off, and we are able to make the trade-off between the hardware implementation constraint, so the power consumption, the cost, the resistance to attack, the size, the volume, uh, for various domains. So, for example, uh, we are able to develop uh, a temporary resistant uh, uh, ICs, but also uh, uh, IoT device, uh, special cri uh, cryptography, which is dedicated for, uh, for IoT device, meaning which is lightweight or distributed, allowing to have a high security even if the node didn't have a high compute power. Cost-effective solution and also um, uh, ultra low cost sparing to really check if your device is a genuine device or not a fake one when integrated in a system. So this is also very important. So just 
one, uh, one slide to uh, give you one idea about what we do in terms of network. So the idea here is to really protect the data that are transmitted uh, from the uh, sensor network, but also to protect the network infrastructure from all the attack. And for this, we have various solutions, lightweight uh, uh, cryptography or distributed cryptography, which allow very low power and very low compute resources system to still implement uh, a, a secure and a strong cryptography, but also dynamic uh, key establishment and analysis of, uh, of threats. Uh, uh, in the system. Um, as I told before, also secure software update for all this network. I will take with another system which is a complete end-to-end uh, -end solution. It's a um, uh, uh, secure solution coming from nodes where basically nodes are uh, identification with uh, uh, SIMs, universal SIMs, uh, which allow to generate keys uh, for the communication with the, uh, with the server. We have hardware assist on the fly memory encryption of the data on the server. On the server run an hypervisor which really creates silos between various application on each, uh, on each uh, virtual machine, each application has its own encryption key and is really separated from the other. And uh, for this, we have developed one uh, hypervisor, uh, which is called uh, Anaxagoros. And, and this hypervisor, in fact, started from control of nuclear power plants, meaning that uh, criticality is very important, is at the core of the system. So it's really able to make special security, so really isolating various tasks from the other, so one task cannot intrude or spy other tasks, but also temporal security, so ensuring that the deadline are really done by all the tasks. And this hypervisor was started, was designed using formal verification tools that were also uh, developed in CA that allow to really see that the code itself is correct, that we do not have memory leaks, uh, uh, that it's really strong code for the hypervisor itself. And it's able to virtualize various operating systems like Linux and more uh, specialized operating systems. In terms of security, I would like to give you a last idea on the more uh, 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 new uh, scheme that we are working on. So basically, when you send data to the cloud, how can you be sure that the cloud a computing platform will not misuse your data. So basically, it's a business model of Google. You send data to Google, but it can use its data for its own use. But if you don't to do it, how, how to achieve that? So basically, most people think that a microprocessor could only process in the clear domain. It cannot process encrypted data. But there is a solution called homomorphic encryption that allow to compute operation, to make operation into the encrypted domain. So basically, a non-homomorphic encryption system is a system that allows to make any calculation in the encrypted domain, meaning that the, uh, that the crypto computer never sees the data that is processed, neither the result is computing. And, and from the end user, the end user could not uh, uh, check or probe what the algorithm the crypto computer is doing. So it's security from both sides. So meaning from the server side, it's sure that this algorithm remains private, that nobody could uh, detect it. And from the end user, it's sure that its own data will never be clear uh, 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 or, or misused by the, by the server. So this is a quite new research. This was shown to exist in 2009, uh, but this was very inefficient. It's a million of times slower than, uh, than normal com uh, computation. But we make progress in software compilation, optimization models that allow to make some real application now. 
I have a very small example here just to illustrate this view. Imagine that you are your medical diagnosis here. You want to know if you are at risk. But of course, you don't want that people know that you are at risk so that the servers will send you to your insurance company that will raise the bill or something like that. So with the homomorphic and, uh, encryption, you encrypt your data, you send it to the server. The server makes the operation saying, OK, you are at risk for cardiac uh, uh, problems. But the result, this, will only uh, be visible by you, not by the server. And this operation so, uh, uh, is, is done in a, in, in a split second on a laptop now using uh, homomorphic en uh, encryption. So just to tell you that now homomorphic encryption become real. So now I move to the last uh, challenge for IoT, which is interoperability. And the solution for imperability is, of course, to overcome the fragmented and um, vertically oriented closed system that we still have today, and to move towards more open system on the platform that will support multiple applications. So what we have today is that you have the smart home domain with their standard, with their system. Smart health, same. Smart transport, also smart city. So these are silos. And basically, what we need to do is to have interoperability between all these uh, systems that allow to mitigate between all the various software platform or, or even hardware platform. So also here, we have some proposal that allow basically to deal with the heterogeneity of network. So basically, each device is seen, is seen as, a dev, as, a, as a service. And uh, uh, this allows to manage the unexpected, the unexpected, so switching from one sensor to another, uh, and, and have a continuous integration of new sensor of new services in the system. So this is a snapshot of the of the software uh, development view. Uh, here it's for uh, uh, it's in it, it's in Paris. It's how to, you manage various sensors uh, to get various information in um, uh, uh, with this sensor network. And I would like to illustrate this particular case uh, with what we are doing with Japan. So it's uh, our contribution in the Europe Japan project. So, like in the previous talk, I do believe that we really need a close collaboration between Europe and Japan. Because basically, we are both key players in the ICT domain. As I said before, we need to have interoperability. On the scale of this market, uh, needs uh, that um, um, challenge us to work together more closely and effectively, of course, uh, uh, in, in uh, conformity with our mutual interest. So this, this was already spotted by the European Commission that start various call in the previous um, uh, frame program, and also now in the new uh, um, uh, European project framework called Horizon 2020. I will highlight uh, first uh, uh, one project that uh, started um, a few years ago, and it's called Cloudy, Cloud of Things. Uh, um, and it's a project where we are coordinator in France, and uh, Entity East is, co uh, uh, is coordinator in, uh, in Japan. So in Japan, uh, it's Entity East, Entity uh, Research and Development, KU University, uh, Panasonic System Solution and uh, uh, National Institute of Informatics. I have a, f a short movie here that will introduce you this um, this uh, project. Let me tell you about an innovative solution for tomorrow's smart cities. Today, progress in micro and nanotechnologies has considerably reduced the size of communicating devices, such as sensors or smartphones. These can be deployed easily, whether on the scale of a home, a city, a country, the world, or even beyond. Imagine a city filled with various sensors for traffic, pollution, weather, noise, 
anything's possible. At each point in time, these devices generate data specific to that city at that moment. Now, imagine that you can retrieve this data flow securely. Imagine that you can store it. Imagine that you can sort this data flow in real time in order to offer it for various applications. These applications could then combine data to make enriched information. This information could be used by various tailored responsive services designed to improve quality of life for the city's residents. This innovative solution has a name, the Cloud of Things. Okay, um, so the project is uh, started, uh, well, it's half of the project now. Uh, we have uh, a first reference architecture, which allows to have interoperability between all the system. We have uh, basically 10 use cases in 10 application uh, domain, and uh, uh, we have uh, a field trial in four pilot cities in Europe, Santander in Spain, Genova, and in uh, Japan, Mitaka and uh, Fujisawa. I will take one example about uh, Fujisawa here. So it's um, uh, 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 basically integration of various sensor coming from, let's say, uh, city database, the map, uh, even the citizen participation, so the tweets are also uh, put as input in the system. So you have also information about uh, as, um, uh, the train, uh, about uh, a value sensor like camera, like temperature, like pollution. And from this, uh, we can make various uh, uh, applications. Uh, we have up to 10 applications that are uh, uh, here that use uh, this public API. But we could also have more private part uh, for data that you don't want to uh, share. So, uh, for example, here, uh, uh, imagine that uh, you arrive at the, at, the, at the station here, and, uh, and the sensor see that there is a nice weather, and, uh, well, uh, uh, they will uh, sink in one hour. So here, uh, we have a projector that could uh, send to you uh, when you arrive at the station, say, well, uh, you could have a look at the, uh, at the Fujitsan uh, uh, from this location. Or uh, if, if there is some pollution saying, okay, you better go uh, uh, here because it's safer and things like that. And also on the street, it's controlling the street lighting on various things. So in regular mode, we really collect all the shop tourism, uh, tourism information, information from citizens say, I like this, we have, a, we have a problem here in the street, or things like that. And we collect them for various, um, for various application. But all this system could also be used in emergency mode. So, uh, for example, if there is a problem, uh, 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 then we can immediately switch on the system, uh, saying, okay, uh, all the train will be stopped, please, uh, the, the city lighting will flash a red light, saying, please go to the shelter, uh, uh, we will have information uh, uh, in, the, in the various locations, saying, okay, go to the shelter here. So it's really with the same system, uh, uh, with various application on combining all the data, you will have plenty of application. So here, uh, for example, is a view of the Fujisawa dashboard, where basically all the city resources are virtualized in the cloud, uh, like the temperature, uh, 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 like, uh, like the weather, like the wind, like the pollution. And then uh, we could have access on your mobile phone uh, to this dashboard, or we could trigger uh, a projector to, uh, to trigger special events or special information according to this. This is really an open system here. I will have another movie that I will uh, skip in, uh, uh, in view of time, but uh, this movie is, uh, or, or this application, is really trying to get elderly people to go out and to enjoy uh, um, a common work or the city here. So it's by participating, basically, uh, um, from the city that say that there are new events here, you should go there because the weather is fine, you will not have problem to brace, and uh, it will be fun for you according to your scheme. So people could go there, could also put what they call 
poll, meaning uh, uh, some tweets say, okay, I'm here, it's interesting, so that other uh, uh, elderly people could come and really uh, resocialize again and go out, uh, which is very important for their, uh, for their health. And here we have installed various uh, tag in Mitaka City for, for trying uh, um, uh, this experiment. If you also go to the Kamakura station, we have also um, uh, some signage that allow you to, to see what are the tourism information from this. So it's already operational and you can check uh, what, uh, what we are doing uh, uh, in this project. We are in also involved in, in another project called Festival, which is basically how to test interoperability between systems. So it's still really experimentation as a service. So the idea here is that you could have um, a, a smart building, so here in Osaka train station and in uh, Osaka Osampo uh, uh, a building. So here people could uh, uh, try their idea of Internet of Things and we are providing them the infrastructure and the interoperability. So it's really helping people to find new business model, new idea about Internet of Things and we try to see how to ensure uh, interoperability. So now it's time to conclude for me. So I think it's very important to team between Europe and Japan for IoT projects and to team with us CIA Tech. So why? Because we are developing innovative solutions covering most of the aspect of Internet of Things with a special focus on low energy and security. Well, our partner, uh, we, we enable them to access to new technology uh, like FDSOI, ultra low power uh, device in, in sensing computing and communication, scalable middleware for networks, secure and trusted solution, including this new homomorphic uh, encryption, uh, real-time hypervisor on super, uh, and uh, virtualization for the servers. <coughs> Excuse me. So we are also a key player in Europe-Japan cooperative project on 5G. We also have projects here on 5G that I didn't uh, explain, IoT on cloud technology. So we really wish to reinforce the current cooperation that we have today uh, uh, with Japanese company and Japanese university with dedicated program. So that's my conclusion and don't hesitate to contact me for further information. Uh, we also have um, a people here located in the French embassy that could also help you to cooperate with us and to see how we could really help you to go on the market and to really uh, uh, take a, a part of this big pie of the emerging uh, Internet of Things. Thank you very much. <laughs>